Hey everybody, it's your Patsy here. Um, I promised that I would be here at three o'clock to do uh, online uh, uh, live boxing, but and I was here almost. <laughs> then my ego made would you know I'm trying to get into. I did my prayers and I was lighting the candle and the incense and I started to. Um, I'd already done my prayers, but I just started to talk about inside. I was just thinking while I was doing everything, you know, how great this is and how grateful I am for the gifts and how much I wanted to thank Ego for just being so faithful, you know, and uh, I started to get the message I started to, in my head, recite the uh, 121st Psalm. You know, that just, it's always, I always noticed it, even in my family, that everybody in the family seems to love this psalm. And every, t my, my mother's side of the family, especially, that's where I noticed it. And if I usually go to um, funeral services for people who are of Panamanian or Bayesian descent, they, they recite this 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 psalm too, so it just came to me to say, okay. And then I said, well, why not just grab the Bible, which is just right next to me on the bookshelf. No, it's on the way my uh, bova is set up. I have like a shelf, so it's part of the altar, right? And when it stays open, at the one twenty first psalm. So all I'm really gonna do is just, you know. Raise up a little bit, push back the table a bit, go get it, come sit back down. No problem. Hey, Melanie. Hey, Anthony. <laughs> hey, Fitzgerald. Um, so I'm there and I'm like, okay. And I move the table. And all, everything everything that's in the back, all of the cards that I usually, you know, have their stack. Just so the boxes could be there in case I forget to acknowledge the uh, authors. They, they, they start moving they start pushing and something falls off only one of them so there there were four up there right we had the um romance angel oracle deck by doreen virtue we have the tarot the orisha by Durkan and zerloff and we have the until today cards by yana van zandt and lately when i got the um Sexual magic tarot, I put it there too. This is a tarot, sexual magic, and it's uh, written by Laura Twan, I believe is his name, and Los Quierbo, Los Cabero, Los Cabero, maybe I said it right that time, Los Cabero are the publishers. Okay, so that's been sitting there. I've been doing the readings, and at, let me just say this. It's been off the chains. People are really enjoying the uh, videos this Last, the love bites this last go around, most notably uh, Libra and Virgo. Oh my God, it's amazing. And there are people sending me texts from Hawaii and Greece. I mean, what? This is amazing. The, the technology is something, isn't it? So that was what part of one of the things that I was doing. I was like just thanking, thanking my ego for, for this opportunity and this experience and stuff. Be, this is I think my galaxy just interrupted my desktop so I'm gonna power it off thank you I think that's what's going on I'm trying to learn this here stuff and I'm, I'm really enjoying learning these te technology I always like that I was kind of geeky like that well, always, always I got I got a lot of tomboy in me I know that I know that I know that but it was it was whipped out of me <laughs> very early on. <laughs> it was whipped anyway, another story. So <clears throat> I will um so when I go to look, you know, see what fell, I'm looking and the only thing that fell was the box for the <laughs> tarot sexual magic. Now, last week I noticed 
when I had just uh, started to do the unboxing and, and everything and started to do some readings and practicing, I just got this, Aegon was telling me that they did not want that deck to be part of the, you know, lineup. For whatever reason, you know, okay, old people. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm like, okay. So I gave them their own altar cloth. Everything has been swimmingly good. And I've gotten all of these hits now. I'm saying they, they kind of still, you know, giving it some shade. The, those are the messages I'm getting while I'm getting prepared. And I was saying, but look at look at this. This is somebody. This is uh, something that people are are interested in, and 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 uh, it really isn't that bad. It, when I look back at it, I you know it wasn't too much nudity yet. <laughs> you know, too much, you know, stuff that I couldn't find words for yet. So, you know, come on, it's kind of fun. So when everything fell, there was no tarot <laughs> magic. <laughs> the, the box was gone. So I'm down on the floor now looking underneath the table and the bookcase. Where is it? Underneath my chair is a basin uh, that I use when we do uh, herbs, we make herbal baths and things like that. And so I keep it over here because this is like my sacred space, you know, nobody sits here and, you know, whatever, but that's what I've chosen to do. Try to, you know, consolidate my stuff out of interrupting my family too much. So, you know, not interrupt. As it, I've already taken up a corner of the living room, but we thank God that we have a living room, right? And all I was doing was trying to give some gratitude. And then I'm now on my, my knees doing this, and it's time to get ready to do this video. I crawl underneath and I look, I see a bottle of water that I didn't know I had under there. Okay, great, a bottle of water, thank you. Uh, I don't know when it rolled under there. It could be holy water, it could be Poland Springs, I don't know, but I picked it up. And then I still couldn't find the cards. And then I glanced over at the basin. <laughs> and there was the box of the cards in the basin. <clears throat> the water had, ju I just found the water. I had water in one hand and I looked and I saw it in the basin. I said, okay. So <clears throat> I will try to leave off. Uh, the box for the child sexual magic on this side of the room and we'll leave everybody else over here and try not to interrupt their space but i just had to share that with you guys oh my god see this all right some people right now would say she has lost her mind she's talking to herself and she's thinking that she's got spirit guys or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. okay but I'm not. I'm not crazy. I, I check for it. Believe me. Uh, and I will. I will continue to check for it. <laughs> but so far, even the psychologist says, "Hmm." <laughs> so what? I don't. Anyway, that's how they deal with me, and um, I thank goodness for that. I thank God for that. Look, they give some lessons sometimes that are very hurtful, and they um, certainly have hurt me. But it's been, you know, I say just for your own good. How you know your grandparents and your parents just say, yeah, well, this is this is, this punishment is just for your own good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, that's them still <laughs> with instructions and roadmaps from God to say how to get you to where you need to be so that they can get to where they need to be. That's all this is. That's, we are taking turns for our, our, our people, our ancestors. We just keep coming back, different ones of us keep coming back, coming back so that the family can continue to ascend. At least that's what I've, that's the, the impression that I've gotten from everything that I've all the interactions that I've, that I've had and uh, the dreams and the thoughts, you know, and the channeling sometimes 
which I, I can't control. I wish I knew how to, <laughs> you know, but anyway, I'm trying to get to the point of this. So anyway, they're going to be living on different sides of the room for now. Hopefully that's enough of a separation. They're, they've got a separate um, Oracle card, um, altar cloth that I've used. Maybe they want me to put another white uh, doily or some covering on top of them, even though I'm, I'm trying to keep the cards on the table in case I need to refer back to them as they lay out. See, these are the types of things that goes on. I, I, I try to reason with them, but I thank goodness, you know, sometimes they actually understand give me a break and then there's sometimes when they don't they don't tell me what they're doing they just go ahead and do it and but it's not like without a warning it really isn't it's not without a warning thank god thank god it's never been without a warning that i'd already done this why, why are you doing it again but i did it anyway so this time it hurt and it hurt the last time too, but you did it anyway, so it's gonna have to hurt again. <laughs> did you get it yet? Oh, doing it again? All right, we'll let that one hurt too. And after a while, they're just like, "Damn, really?" And then comes the earthquake. There's the tower effect. There's the tower effect. Anyway, hey Sue, hi Daphne, hi Winnie, hi Melanie, hi Anthony. Um. Thanks for coming in, Daphne. I hope you're feeling bad. I've been praying for you. So anyway, um, so anyway, let me uh do what we're gonna do. Okay, so today we're going to be opening up the Akashic Tarot. Okay, Akashic Tarot. And this is by Carolyn Klinger and Sandra Ann Taylor. This is a 62 card deck and guidebook. And it says, find the answers you seek, attract your greatest love, uncover mystical histories and unknown futures. The Akashic Tarot is an astoundingly accurate tool for predicting the future, unveiling hidden insights and unleashing new powers. This unique 62 card deck can transport you to the great hall of records to help you discover the unknown. It can also Reveal ancient and new talents, unexpected victories, imminent rendezvous, unmet allies, and the steps to untold prosperity. What? Really? <laughs> okay. The Akashic Tarot is designed to access the profound energy and unlimited information that make up the Akashic Records which are great fields of wisdom that transcend time and space and we are immediately available and are immediately available to all. With each card you connect with a powerful Akashic force and open to the psychic currents that are always flowing between you and the Akashic realm. This deck will help you connect with your spirit guides Ascended Masters, Angels, and Loved Ones in Spirit. With the turn of a card, you can enter the Akashic world. What? Really? Okay. All right. So this is beautiful. This is like a, maybe a mint green, maybe a mint green, and a lot of yellow, gold, white, very, very beautiful, and, and very apt. Arabic looking kind of scene, I guess. Asian Arabic. I hope you all can see that well. But it's a beautiful box. Beautiful box. And it's heavy. It's pretty thick. So these are 62 <coughs> tarot cards. Oh, tarot usually has 78. So what's missing here? Well, it's a whole different system, I guess. And can imagine. Ah, I remembered to put the scissors somewhere. I'm getting better at these things. So I'm going to open this up. 
but and I know I'm going to do another thing too before we do all of this. I'm going to take off the saran wrap and then we're going to, I'm just going to do that prayer that Psalm 121. And can, for those people who aren't familiar with it, it's in the King, King James Version of the Bible of the Holy Scriptures. Okay, so that came off fairly easily. I could have taken it off with my nails, I guess, but uh, anyway, here we go. Psalm 121, a song of degrees. I will lift up my I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall never slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. I should. So, so, anyhow, that was that I wanted to share. That's the second time this past week I needed to share that. I think it was Leo. I think Leo. They uh, had to start off. Somebody's reading, not reading that. So maybe that's the lesson I need to start doing that every. Uh, okay, we'll see. We'll see. Try to remember to do it more often at least than I can do. Definitely. And when I get, whenever I have ever. Okay, maybe this is what they want me to say. This is why they're bringing it to me. So maybe they want me to get it out. Maybe somebody else needs to hear it, or maybe other people have had that same feeling when they've read it, and maybe that's a confirmation. But I've always felt like it was a legacy song for my family or for the people who who try to keep our culture going. Like when they were exposed to to Christianity and um, accepted that or had to accept that that this that song for some reason maybe back in in my family le legacy somewhere someone held on to that like as a mantra it must have been maybe the people because like i said i've gone to panamanian did i say to y'all no I said to myself <laughs> when i've gone to panamanian funerals or, or Bayesian people's funerals Everybody. Now I'm going to other people's funerals too, and everybody does scripture. And sometimes they do this, and a lot of times they don't. But it, it never fails. For all the ones I've been to, the people that I know that my family uh, migrated to uh, the United well, not to the United they were already American citizens. My mother and them were born American because they were born in the Canal Zone. But when they migrated to New York, that's how it would go. When they migrated to New York, they, uh, hey, Dorothea, hey, Donnell, hey, Diane, when they, uh, hey, Sue, <clears throat> when they migrated to New York, uh, they, it was like a still community of people, you know, like everybody from the same town, Gatun, the Canal Zone, whatever, you know, those places, Cologne, 
they kind of, you know, kept in touch and, and, and they were supportive of each other, like all immigrant groups are. I don't know, all migrant groups are that, you know. Um, but they were born American citizens, so they didn't have to, well, nobody had to be afraid of anything until this fool lately. I'm not going there because it's not about that. So um, <laughs> we, um, did just, I've gone, I've seen, I've seen it um, in my great grandmother's when she was alive and even in my step grandmother's home and my grandmother's home. This was the, 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 the thing. This was the thing, you know, and of course we know the, um, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and glory forever. Amen. Yeah, I grew up with that. I know I know that. They teach that everywhere. <laughs> you know, I asked my son, did I do he and his sister a disservice? because I didn't really emphasize it that much. You know, like, they, you need to have that. I don't care what nobody says. You need to, there's something about that. You need to have that as a fallback, no matter what you do. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Work with what works, child. Have a way we got to work it. Now, today is the 27th. So, the other thing is for the Leo reading that they directed me to do, and the same as this, the Ayala Van Zandt until today deck um, was uh, after product, I believe, of the until today book that uh, was written way back in... I mean, not way back. She's not old. She's not, you know. <laughs> but I think it was 2000 or so. It had to be because I have an autographed copy of it, and this is in August of 2001, so it's at least that old. And I think that, I think that had to be before that. Sister, I, don't, I can't, I can't do a phone call. I know she's trying to watch, and she made a mistake. <laughs> anyway, um, that's my Eastern Star sister, so I guess sister, so I guess I, uh, I'm my uh, past worthy matron, so I have to acknowledge my uh, order of the Eastern Star. And whatever you guys say about that, say what you got to say. I don't care, whatever. Uh, that's how my spirit is led. And as I've done my research and my lineage and my genealogy, I see, okay, that's that's where that went, you know. Um, that uh, Ia Azula Egun, Azula was one of my father's aunts. And from what I'm seeing, uh, one of her daughters married a minister, a reverend, and they were both in the Masons and the Eastern Stars. She was uh, a matron at some point because I've seen a picture of her with the whole thing on. And that's amazing. And I didn't know that. I joined the Eastern Stars back in 1992. You know, I just started uh, doing all of this research. Well, whenever Ancestry.com, you know, was open to the general public, which has been lately, like in the last six years, five years, I don't know, but whatever. So I didn't know that when I joined it. I just knew that I had family. I had uncles who were in the military, and you have to have an uncle or your father or your uh, brother or your husband um, has to be uh, able to vouch for you because Eastern Stars are the daughters and wives and uh, granddaughters and mothers and sisters and nieces of Masons. If that was if that was anybody's uh, de um, definition of a secret, knock it off. I'm gonna tell you what I found out about them too. And I guess I put this up because somebody needs to hear it, and I maybe mean, I'll never get a chance to say it again. But this is what I'm gonna say. I was talking to a sister. Um, she's been around a long time. She's seen a whole lot of years. 
she's like the oldest sister in our in the order in the jurisdiction that I'm in that I you know that's still coming to meetings and still out you know still going around so she was talking to me uh, we're a group of us this is a small group and uh, somehow we got onto the subject of police violence and this and that and she said you know that was one of the things that um, was good about the Masons back in the day that this was black people's way of getting uh, disputes and and uh, disruptions resolved without going to the courts, without dealing with and uh, so they had their own justice among themselves and if your husband, let's say your husband or let's say some man uh, who, who you knew was a brother made uh, some kind of pass at you. Okay, let's let's do that. Let's do that. If 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 you um, told, even if you weren't a sister, but especially if you were a sister, if you exposed him to his brothers, he went to the uh, grand matron or grand patron, grand patron or master mason, whatever it is they have on their side, I don't know. But whatever they do. They have like a, you could take somebody to them, like, or, or, or take a story to them, or they would have to follow that up, and they would have to uh, make that brother uh, do some kind of a penance if you found, they found that he was guilty, and they would do that. So, like, let's say your husband was, you had a husband that was beating you, all right? Back in the day, you, your, your husband is abusive. If he's a mason, you go and you tell that to the brothers, and they will step to him. They would, they would straighten it out. And and she was just saying that that's how they resolve conflicts like that. Um, somebody you know um, did a service and then somebody didn't take care of them or you know they were bad mounting their business whatever like that. They would take that to the that kind of a council. So it was like a tribal thing. All right. So again, again, again. Anything that we do, anything that we believe in, anything that we try to do as a people, as a community, becomes negative, secretive, can't be talked about, can't be practiced. Why? Because that is where our community, that's where our power. United we stand, divided we fall. There's a reason for every thing we were denied, why didn't they want us to read? Why didn't they want us to become educated? It wasn't that we couldn't be taught. It wasn't that we weren't willing to learn. What willing? You, you, you got to do something to try to survive. If you could learn how to speak their language, you should be able to learn how to read it. But they didn't want you to learn how to read because then you could do something past what they were telling you. Systematically evil. To subjugate another human being for your own pleasures, comforts, weaknesses. Okay, so this book <laughs> is like a daily um, affirmation. Thank you. And um, so I read it on the 23rd, I believe, for Leo. And today's the 27th. So what it is, it's like a passage. It's assigned to that day. And I'm going to do this as quickly as I can, and then we're going to get to the inboxings. Um, and I thank you all for, for tuning in here. Hi, Diane. Hey Edwin, hey hey Laura, hey Darlene. Um, I'm going to uh, do this and then we'll do that. But um, I've got a reading to do today, and I just kind of wanted to like get the juices flowing. So, you know, hanging out with you guys, I'm comfortable talking like I'm talking to people I know because I know I'm talking to people I know. 
because you know my Facebook friends and family for for the most part. So I know when I when I see Dorothea, I know who Dorothea is. When I see Edwin, I know who Edwin is. You know, when I see Daphne, I know who Daphne is. But then I got new friends like Sue. You know, um, Darnell and I work together, so I know Darnell. Dorothea. <laughs> We socialize in the same areas at one point in our youth, all right, our young adulthood. So I know them and I feel comfortable, even though we're not chatting and I'm talking. It, it's all right. It, it's something that gives me, uh, I get centered and then I can do the reading later on for, for that person. And I've been getting a lot of requests for readings too. And that's wonderful. That's so great. All right, so December 27th, I will know peace when I am willing to be peaceful. Fighting your way does not increase, fighting to have your way does not increase your peace. Finding others, finding, fighting others about their ways does not increase your peace. Refusing to acknowledge when you have made a mistake does not increase your peace. Going to extraordinary lengths to avoid making a mistake does not increase your peace. Refusing to acknowledge and embrace your shortcomings does not increase your peace. Pointing out the shortcomings of others does not increase your peace. Trying to fix other people does not increase your peace. Not asking for what you want does not increase your peace. Accepting less than you want does not increase your peace. Trying to improve your worth and value, trying to prove your worth and your value does not increase your peace. Refusing to accept that others are worthy or valuable does not increase your peace. Failing to take responsibility for yourself does not increase your peace. Taking on the responsibility for the lives of others does not increase your peace. Avoiding unpleasant things does not increase your peace. Trusting that you are always doing the very best you can and will does increase your peace. Until today, you may have been engaged in behaviors and activities that disturbed your peace of mind. Just for today, increase your peace. Engage in self-loving, self-nurturing, self-supporting behaviors and activities. Today, I am devoted to increasing life, to increasingly, mm, Sorry, you guys. Today, I am devoted to increasing the peaceful experiences in my life. Today, I'm devoted to increasing the peaceful experiences in my life. I say, gee, I told y'all, y'all one of my peaceful experiences. <laughs> because then talking to yourself isn't crazy because you got an audience. <laughs> so now <laughs> let's see what goes on here with the uh, Akashic Tarot. Okay, so it's heavy. The box is a little heavy and it's tight, which is good. It's been sitting on the pulsa for the week, so. Weeks, actually. I know they didn't put any extra tape on this. No, it's just me. And my weekends. Give me a second. Who am I not here? Hey, Dolly. What? Got to be stuff up sometimes. Okay. Come on, people. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It's not secure. It's not stuck. Mm -hmm. All right, so that should loosen that up. Let's do 
check it, make sure everything is ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. I had glued something there. Mm -hmm. Did they do it like that? That deep? I'm putting this old card in between because when I put it on one side, I could hear the glue break when I put the card, the card in. I go around it again. Twenty-one ninety-nine. Really? All of that security? <laughs> I guess you're not supposed to get into those. The Akashic Tarot. Okay. okay. That's probably done purposely. Okay. Well, that's a first. <laughs> All right. So, see, very deep. Good job. Whole thing could go in there. All right, just so you see how deep this thing is. All right. Oh, oh, wow, so pretty. All right, so this is the back of the deck. And it is not gilded. All right, we talked about the gilding. Usually makes them a stronger card, but we'll see. It has this thing that I'm sure it'll take me more time than it needed to to get off. See, man. Mmm, right. pretty, pretty. Okay, let's see before we start doing stuff. So again, okay, the guidebook has the same artistry as the top of the box. The border is yellow and the box is green, but it's the same picture with different borders. Okay, this is by Sharon and Klinger and Sandra Taylor. And it's published by Hay House. And it is um, hmm. um, beside the biographies and advertisements. It's 218 pages. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. All right, so well, let's. Okay, all right. They they there's a lot of information here. There's a lot of uh, fourth story about this, but I'm they have something here that says the history of the tarot and how this deck is unique. So maybe that would be more appropriate for this short trying to stay short session. Uh, the history of the tarot and how this tarot deck is unique. Many people assume that the right away tarot deck set the standard for what a tarot deck should contain and even look like. This is curious because Arthur Wide Waite, author Edward Waite, working with artist Pamela Coleman Smith, created this tarot deck in 1910. And tarot decks have been around for hundreds of years. When Wade did a did carry a Wade did carry a number of ideas, such as the suits from some older decks into his own. Okay, so he carried that that the suits thing into this, into the right of weight deck. In medieval Europe, the suits found in the Italian and Spanish cards were thought 
to represent the different castes of society. Oh yes, I have the Spanish card, yes, okay. Swords for knights and nobility, cubs for staves or for peasants, club or staves for peasants, cups or chalices for clergy, and coin for tradesmen and commercial class. While weight inspired, was inspired and designed by some of the earlier decks from Central Europe, there are a great many other tarot decks that have many different suits, different number of cards, and a different major arcana. The oldest existing deck of suited cards goes back to the 1420s in Germany, and the suit signs were dogs, stags, ducks, and falcons. Okay. 1420s. Columbus sailed the ocean blue and got lost in 1492, right? So that's 70 years before that. Okay. The oldest extant the oldest extant Swiss deck comes from 1530, though there are litera literary references to it as far back as 1377. Its suits are actually some of our favorites, shields, acorns, flowers, and bells. Okay. <laughs> There's no element of destructive weaponry here. No swords or clubs, okay. Even the shields are not depicted as armor, but as heraldic crests and banners hanging from walls or carried as flags. We were inspired by some of the symbols and icons found in this and other ancient decks. Okay, so they took some images from the Swiss deck. Okay, interesting. When we decided to do the Akashic Tarot, we didn't we just didn't want to redo what is considered to be the traditional tarot. Instead we were driven for our by our years of work with the Akashic records, as well as decades we have spent studying and researching the cultures, philosophies, societies, histories and spiritual practices that reach into ancient times as well as around the globe. So in this deck you will find many differences in the major arcana, the number of cards, and the people. The reasons for these differences have roots in numerology, theories of karma, and rudic mysteries, quantum physics, natural law, religious symbolism, Buddhist traditions, and mythologies mythologies and beliefs from around the world. Nothing in this card could possibly be as expansive as the Akashic records, which are eternal and boundless. But in our design, we tried to make the scope of the Akashic Tarot emulate the scope of the records. We hope that you will find, as we have, that these cards can help you discover the scope of your life, your limitless life, limitless life, power and potential. Okay, so, all right, all right, because my base, base, base understanding of this is that this is like, you know how they say that you, when you go to the pearly gates, you got to justify your, your life, what you've done and, and things, that this is the place that kind of keeps a record of that for your entire legacy, your family, you all. So it's like the Library of Congress for spirit. However it's set up, however it was accessed, whatever. Look, I don't know if they have scrolls or if they have iPads. I don't know what it is. But that's where they say, they're saying is that if you can access, what I'm understanding is that people that uh, can access their past life records, their um, the memories or whatever, through this practice, Akashic practice. So the tarot would, I guess, help you to find out what your past lives were. 
And that's interesting because I had two past life um, tarot decks that I haven't opened. I was saving for an unboxing, maybe New Year's Day or something like that. Um, yes, because I was a very good girl and I got lots of boxes. So, <laughs> um, so I, I'm 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 a little I'm a little curious and I'm a little uh, um, intimidated. Like, what is this gonna be? Well, we gonna find out. And look at me. They talked about numerology in here, and that was the second box we were gonna open up today. So, a shagel. Hmm. All right, stop being scary, Cat Patty. Let's see what else we can do. Who didn't I say hey to yet? Darlene, hey, Rena. Hey, Steve. Um, while I'm looking through this, let me just say this. For New Year's, whatever your resolution practices and you know, like weight loss, all that other crap, forget it. Not telling you to forget it. Just if you can remember, Think of two things that you should be grateful for this past year and two things that you learned this past year and two things that are great about you this past year. And while we post that on New Year's Day, it gives you enough time to think about it. Two things that you're grateful for. Let's write it down so we don't forget because you know that MS brain. But that's what they just told me to say. And so that's what I'm going to say. So, two things you're grateful for this past year. Remember last year when it was going, everybody was dying and all of this stuff, like the last few days? Debbie Reynolds and her, her daughter, the Star Wars movie, my son went to see that last night and it brought it back to my mind. Okay, so two things you're grateful for. Just two. Two things you learned. And two things that you like about yourself. And it could be Something that you've learned this year that you like about yourself. Okay. So let's make that part of our New Year's Day post if we can remember, okay? The little, that little banner artwork that they're letting us play with now. Do that. New Year's Day. In the morning, two things you're grateful for, two things you learned, and two things that you like about yourself, all pertained to the previous year, 2017. Because it came in kind of rough there at the end of 26. We was cussing 2016 out, right? Didn't, he, didn't they take Prince and Debbie Reynolds and, oh man, all kinds of people. It was like boom, 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 boom. So. It was a little rough time, I think, for us that year on all levels. And so 2017, we were like, get 2017, oh, get 2016 over with so we can get something new. And we did. <laughs> mm. Okay, stop that. Let's not go there. We'll, be, we'll never get these cards broken in. All right, I'll look that. Okay, so they have, you can do, a reading on a daily basis to give yourself a quick overview of the day's events so to help you tap the Akashic, Akashic forces. The one card poll can also respond to specific questions you have. Okay, so let's take a look at these cards, what they look like. Okay, so 
they are they're not glossy at all they're matte finish all right so it shouldn't matter the um light won't be so glary on these see that's kind of pretty it's like a land land uh not landscape but it is a landscape it's a landscape so you're getting This person here that's singing this king here, there's a real human being. This is like a picture of, of a person. Like they took a picture of anybody and put him in this armor. Or maybe he's a model and, and he dressed like that for this. But I don't even know if that horse is real. But I know the face of that man is real is there's is is a lot of depth to this and uh all kinds of digital manipulations and stuff it's beautiful though okay queen of keys okay okay so it's not glary her dress is purple and greenish it's got that kind of like the overcoat is purple and the uh, underdress is green mm -hmm. See that. and again that's 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 some that's someone that, that's somebody <laughs> that's a fake that's a real human being that's a real person it's not a drawing it's a it's someone's face it's someone modeled for this i guess because there were no cameras back then so <laughs> this is a depiction we know that but it's still very pretty very pretty so i guess whoever is going to be representing the different uh, court cards let's see if we can find something else i'm just I'm court let me see keys the keys be swords or money. This is the master artisan. Right? So that would be the eight of pentacles, perhaps, in the tarot. So keys are pentacles, coins, perhaps. Okay, let's see. Oh my, this is pretty. That's pretty, a scent. So that's climbing, being on top of the world. Seven of keys. Yeah, money can make you feel like that. Hmm. Okay, six of keys. The moon. In crescent moon. So this is a different phase of the moon. Okay, so I guess they're going to show us all the different phases. Let me see if I can find... Ooh, pretty. Queen of forces. F-O-R-C-E-S. Queen of forces. She's so pretty. I can't tell if she's drawing or if she's a, if it's a person that, a real person there. She's so pretty. But she's got the moon on one hand and the sun. And the sun on the other side, right? The Lord, right? They shown, the Lord is a shade upon the right hand. The sun will not sh smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. Queen of Forces. I say, no. Hmm. 
Ooh. Ooh, my goodness. Queen of, ooh. King of forces. I see a monster. A purple monster behind him. I swear, maybe I, it's just me, but that's what I see. Uh, I hope y'all see that too. That big thing there looked like a monster. Like Godzilla. Or King Kong or something like that. And I don't watch those things. But that's that's why I, was, I jumped because that's when it first stood out to me. But this is the King of Forces. So this is some powerful, scary shit. <laughs> Really? So keys is one suit and forces is another. Oh, they're beautiful, my God. Well, one of, uh, of keys, architect. So this is a builder. Could be the magician. He's got a table there, just like the magician card does, but he's got a counterpart. He's got his wife or his student, who happens to be a woman, obviously. So at least they're, they're not being sexist, getting some play here in this card. So that means that same way he can do anything because he has all the tools that he needs. She has everything too. Maybe she's learning. Maybe he's teaching her. But she looks like she knows enough. Or she she knows enough herself. And he's smiling, looking like Magic Johnson there. And maybe he is. Maybe that's what it is. They're taking celebrity faces, faces and putting them on people. But whatever. Uh, yeah, it's kind of cloudy. You can't see. But... He could even be showing her and she's grading him on what he what he's doing. It's like he's so excited and gleeful to show her something and she's just mm, okay. Could be that. Could be that. And she's got her other hand on her hip. Little subtle thing like that, right? Now you all know. She could be said, oh, here he goes again. <laughs> you know how you know how we do sometimes. Like, yes, he's got this great idea and he's just we're gonna stand by him though, because that's the chariot we decided to hitch on to. <laughs> okay, so five of scrolls. Okay, so scrolls is here. No, that may be, maybe that sort, writing, communications, maybe. Mm, that was diversity, I'm sorry. Five of scrolls, and they have a, a, a word down at the bottom that would, as you're reading, it would kind of um, help to, to uh, help you remember the definition of it what it stands for. So you don't have to guess or memorize it that hard because they're giving you a great hint in some of these cards. Okay, so. Okay, this is six of scrolls. Sands of time. And sixes in tarot talks about nostalgia. Okay. Okay, so the lady on the front cover, this is her. The Queen of Scrolls. The scrolls is the record keeping for us what we do here in the physical plane and even what we do in the spiritual plane. They're keeping a record of all of this. They know what we're up to. 
as far as our lessons are going. And they probably even know why. I think it tells you all of that. What occurred maybe even, you know, sometimes uh, karma passes down. We think it's from parents to children maybe sometimes, but, it, you know, it could just be uh, familial karma for your family that somebody has to pick it up. And you, you all take turns coming back and getting closer and closer and closer and closer and closer because you keep striving, right? You keep winning. Y'all keep winning. Okay, see? The gate, the king of scrolls. He's got the blueprints, the papers, the scrolls, and his underneath his arm tucked in with his arms folded against him like he's waiting for somebody. Like he's waiting for somebody. I see you, Aaron. Go ahead. <laughs> right? So he's waiting, and the gate's behind him, right? So he's waiting for you to come, to come on so he can go over your records with you. Mm. Those are green. Okay. 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 And the next suit are roses. Okay, so these are forces here. Ooh. Two of Willow. It looks like the wind. But it also looks like the sun is shining. It looks both like the wind is pushing it, but the sun is shining it at the same time. So that's what willow trees look like, right? Weeping, weeping willow, that's what they call them. Is there a difference? Hmm. It's a lot of water. Okay. So the forces are, are they water? Oh my. Four of forces, spring and autumn. They're in the same card. Spring and autumn. Gorgeous. Oh. And this is summer and winter. Okay, so I guess it would turn upside down. Hey, Kevin, Maribel, Michelle, we clamp work beads. <laughs> okay, it did look like a monster. Thank you, Dorothea. Thank you. All right, I'm not crazy. Hey, hey, Ronald and Michelle. Okay, so I guess if it comes this way, it's going to give a time frame of summer. Summer or winter, depending on which pa pa paper it is. I guess which way it, you get it. Okay, so if, if I look at it this way, it'll be winter. So this will help, tell, you know, give us time frames if necessary. So that's good. Waterfall. Hmm. Balance. Balance is justice, right? Supposedly. Balance is karma. Balance is Libra. I just got this. Along with all of that learning and knowledge over here, there's also an open door. So everything shouldn't be work or study. You need to play. You need to go out. That's the balance. And keep an open mind so you can allow other things in. Because every day is a learning experience, right? We, we, that's what we strive for. We should. You know, what did we learn today? What have, you know? 
I do that to myself sometimes. What did I learn today? But that could be another thing that you think about. Maybe that could be one of the habits that you get into. What did I learn today? We got to do something because they ain't trying to educate us. <laughs> or maybe you need to ask your kids. Make that part of your day when they come up, you know, before they go to bed. What did you learn today? I don't know. Right? That's what I'm saying. But then after a while, they might have a great answer for you one day. Because you know, they, they may not always have an answer. They may give you, I don't know. Okay. Your kids. One day, they may give you an answer that will surprise you. About something good. About something good. And you'll be like, okay, I've done my job. Eight of forces, lightning bolt. So this could be like the tower. Yeah. Oof. Oh. I turn it upside down, everything's smoldering. But that would mean that the, the force is over. The fire happened. It's still smoldering, but it happened nonetheless. And this is roses. So this is another suit. Treasure, no, keys, forces, scrolls, and roses. Hmm. Commitment. So you got a uh, contract there. This is one of roses. So this is victory or committing to a situation. It could be work. It could be a relationship. Having good intentions, maybe. <laughs> oh. This is the one of forces, the Akashic field, the Akashic field. It's like uh, tornadoes, lots of twisters. But there's a, there's, there's, It looks like a palace behind it, like a castle to me behind that fog, that greenish looking fog that looks a little purple sometimes too. It may be, to me, it looks like there's a building. See, hey, cursor, can you help? I don't know if y'all can see it, see what my cursor is. Or probably not, but right there, um, okay, right there. It to me looks like part of a building, like a structure. And if I look through that, okay. Hey, I need a nap. The, behind that looked to me like the Statue of Liberty, but you can't see it. It's all covered up with the fog and the mist. And the pollution, probably. And then this here is like a, um, you know, the, the blimp. Because there's something flying. There's something flying there. And if this is medieval times, we know they didn't have that. So it's got to be another kind of time zone where you could have those kind of edifices. Like a castle next to a... A blimp, what are, you know what they call them, say, oh, and then that, that first one that blew up in Hindenburg, they told you it was safe, just like they told you the Titanic was safe, just like they told the Challenger that it was safe, the people on the Challenger that it was safe. You know, 
white men been fucking up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Okay, sorry. All right. Okay, the Oracle of, Del- of Delphi. So Oracle tells things. So it's a messenger. Okay, so this might be like a page. So oracles might be pages. Okay, this is the Akashic Library. All right, so they're depicting it as a physical library, but you see there's a lot of books and there's stairs. And there's someone in there who is still writing. There's someone, he's not reading, he's writing. Hmm. Okay, so we got Archangel Gabriel. And this is birth, B-I-R-T-H, birth and B-E-I-T-H. Maybe that's how they say it in Swiss or German. It's a four, so it's foundational. It's supportive, it's stability. So family. Hmm. What? Okay, so I guess this is kind of like a higher fan. This is number five in this deck. Hillary. Hilarion. Hilarion? Hilarion? I hope I'm saying that right. Hilarion. And there's a man, and behind him and around him are ghosts, spirits. There's a little little baby boy. It's a lady back there sitting, it seems, and another gentleman, and two more, more on the other side. Well, one more on the other side, and there's a little girl next to the lady. The lady sitting, the little girl's holding the hand. And there's another lady behind the Hilarion. So he's forward in the burgundy. So that's protection also, right? That, that red, scarlet, deep red color shows up in uh, some cards uh, with Archangel Michael. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's protection. But it's Archangel Michael is, opens the paths. Now he's reading. Okay, so okay, so now he's reading and they're all around listening. Listening. Watching. Wow. Okay, so it just said um that they're 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 listening for updates or assignments. Like he's he's recalling retelling events and uh, reporting back on what is doing what's going on on this realm or whatever other realm they monitor. And some people are hoping that they'll get a chance to to go back. Hopeful, some of them. Others are good where they are. Wow. Hey, cat. This is the divine physician. I don't know if that would be comparable to the magician because the magician in the, no, I don't think so. But okay, this is one of the the characters, the divine magician. And he's like, his hand is, is like sun. You can see the gold. And he, as he's talking to her, he's got his hand up. And she's 
Just standing there. It looks like a cup in a hand. But it could be prayer. And he's got a, a vessel, a vase, you know, a balance, like they do in an um, Temperance. Temperance has those two bows to balance out the, the libation. He has one. Very, very pretty. Very, very pretty. Okay, so King of Roses views. What? Okay, so this is called Views of the Ego. This is another one with mirroring going on. Views of the Ego. These cards are uh, red and gold. So there's a guy that's looking in the mirror. And there's a man and a lady on each side. And I just, it just came to me that those are his parents. But the only person that is in the mirror, the only reflection that stands in that mirror is his. Hmm. No matter what your parents teach you, you have to answer for yourself, right? You have your own ego. No matter what you've been taught, no matter what you have, how you've been raised, that's what I just got. That you have your own ego, and you have to be accountable for what you do. You can't blame it on, well, that's how I was raised. Not when you've been told, over and over. This is nice, though. They they they're heavier. They're heavier than a lot of those cards, and many of them. But it doesn't have the gilding. But they're good stock. Really good stock. Very very nice. Okay. Cool. I I can figure it out. I could see where I could work with those. That's interesting. Akashic Tarot. Very nice. Okay. So, hey, Joanne. Hey, Sarah. Um, interesting. All righty. We'll take a look at those again. <laughs> uh, okay. So, let's check. The numerology guy is helps. That was something. Hmm. <laughs> wow. That's that's yeah. I gotta get used to that energy. That's very heavy for me. I don't know about other people. I'm just talking about what I feel right this moment, and that is very heavy for me. Not bad at all. Not bad, but kind of like anticipatory, but like I said, in intimidating. It's intimidating for some reason. I got that feeling. Not that I, not intimidating in the sense that I can't learn it or it, it's like I can relate to it. I can feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Felt something interesting. All right. Numerology, guidance cards by Michelle Buchanan. And this is a 44 card deck and guidebook. All right, I just took the shrink wrap off of it, so it's not as uh, thick of a deck. All right, so it's a lot smaller. And the box is easier to get into. Very pretty purple. 
don't know if y'all can see the same shade. But beautiful. See, it looks like a bluish purple, and here it's like more has more red in it. But this box has both those colors: blue, a deep blue, white, and uh, different shades of purple. Hmm. All right. So let's see what these look like. Hmm. Okay. Ooh, pretty, 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 pretty. All right. So these are not gilded either. I don't know why these manufacturers don't go home ahead and do that. All these cards, but that's so we can keep buying decks. To replace the old ones. Especially if we fall in love with them. I gotta say that for that right away deck though. It has lasted, it looks pristine for 20 something years. So it, it, it lasted. I mean, I wasn't using it as much as I use now. I don't use it that much now because I have all of these others, but it has been through some kickers. Hey, Sarah. Okay, so new beginnings. Let's see what this is. Numerology guidance cards. All right. So, again, this is the back of the card. That's pretty. I love purple. My room is purple. <laughs> My bedroom is purple. Yep. Okay. So this is numbers are energetic messages that can help you improve your quality of life and manifest your dreams. If you're in need of an intuitive guidance, inspiration, and hope, this guidebook will accompany the numerology guidances cards. This guidebook to accompany the numerology guidance cards will show you how to reveal your future potential and the issues holding you back. Numbers are energetic messages that can help you improve your quality of life and manifest your dreams. I believe that. If you're in need of intuitive guide, inspiration, and hope. Yes, I do believe that. I, I believe in, in that. I do. And synchronization for me repetitive number is always around two 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 like twins they are repetitive in my family but the first set of twins to survive it, from at least the generations that i've known were my daughter's twins a boy and a girl in ifa in yoruba that's called ibeji and they're supposed to be good luck. And my goddaughters, who were born before them, are twins, but they're the they're they're all they're all fraternal twins because they're different. But these are both girls, but they look different. Different heights, different, you know, different personalities, both beautiful. Again. That's on my father's side of the family. And my grandchildren, I guess, would be on my mother's side of the family. Okay, that's it. See, two, two, two. This happens a lot. Twos repeat themselves, seven repeats themselves itself a lot. Seven and twos and nines and threes <laughs> okay but I get that all day long and and when I'm doing my my genealogy I find so many similarities on both sides of the genealogy you know of miscarriages of twins or only one surviving on both sides and then these <laughs> my munchkins so things like that Two dogs, when I first moved in this house, two little puppies found my son and I as I was taking him to the babysitter. And it was a rainy day in December. I just bought the home and I was trying to get him to the babysitter. And here come these two little puppies bounding down, bounding down. And one was black and white and one was beige and tan and gold. But they were from the same litter. They were exactly the same age. They were the same dog. 
I couldn't find the owners. I knocked on doors. I had to go to work. So I took them back to the house, deposited them. They were little, little. Like they shouldn't even have been out at somebody's eyesight. And I ended up keeping one. I gave another one away to um, a co-worker of mine. I was trying to give both of them away because I just bought my house like the week before and have uh, wood floors. I was like, I want no dogs. But when my son got home from school, when I picked him up and brought him back, he had a fit because I had gotten rid of one of the dogs, especially the black puppy. He wanted the dog. I had given her away. And they were both girl dogs, both girls. But one had a more aggressive character than the other one did. But they were both female. So I took, I kept the other one instead of giving it away. And she stayed with us from... 1997 to 2015, maybe? He died recently. I think it was 15. May. That was May. Yes. And that, and the other one that I'd given away ended up coming back because his new family couldn't keep him and he had been with them. She had been with them many years. So... I worked with this guy, so he told me that he was going to take the dog and take it to the shelter, and I just didn't feel good about that. So I thought I could take the dog and bring her home and give, you know, give her away again. That never happened. <laughs> so she came back and she stayed, and she punked Mitzi, Missy. Her name was Oreo. My dog, the other dog was Misty. Misty's the one that I raised. Oreo is the one that left and came back. She became the alpha dog as soon as she hit the house. And Misty just was like, whatever. Oh, she would get into everything, but she was protective. You know, she barked at, she barked at the Bible loud. She hated when he would come over. Misty was very laid back. She didn't care. So Oreo's a black and white one. She's the aggressive one. And Misty, she's brown and tan, beautiful green hazel eyes. And she's just like, whatever, whatever. So she, Oreo, passed away first. Oh, and the day that the guy that I worked with that brought her back to, back to us was my birthday. We had moved into this house on my birthday. Then here comes the dog back on my birthday. Seven years later. Seven. Anyway, after I retired, I had the good fortune to get um, a way to go on a cruise. I'd never been on a cruise. And I went on a cruise and I had a great, great, great time. And I saw all these different places and it was wonderful. Met some very nice people. As soon as I walk in the door with my bags, I look at Oreo and she's looking all poor. Now my son and his father are supposed to have eyes, you know, taking care of these, these dogs. I was, going, I was going for nine days, nine days. I wasn't home 15 minutes and I was already at the veterinarian with the dog. She had gotten into something and she was losing weight. And so they had to give her IVs and all of that. And I let, she stayed in the animal hospital about two weeks and I paid for it. My heart was breaking. Every, I would go visit her every day. And when she passed away, it was hard. It was terrible. I still had Misty. Now, Misty, you would think she would miss her sister. Nothing. No indication of her missing her at all. She was just like, more food for me. So she stayed with me a few more years and then she passed over and I have their um, paw prints and their ashes and all that yeah yeah I do I guess yes, yes. <laughs> so 
But that was two. Paternal. Just like my goddaughters. Just like my grandbabies. Except my grand my goddaughters are girls, Miss and Oreo were girls, and my babies are masculine or feminine, a boy and a girl. Pay attention to these things, folks. Okay, so how does this work? Hmm. Okay, so they have each of these cards have ooh, uh, energy on it of some sort. This is effort, right? And then the book has a definition that goes along with that number. Effort is 13. Okay, so, all right, are they, do they skip around in numbers or are they all in order? Yes, so this book, except the pages about the biography, about the artist and the author, are, this is 122 pages, they're black and white illustrations inside. But each one is one of the cards. And it has an affirmation at the end of the explanation. So this kind of, I guess, like the um, Oracle, card, well, the cards I use for Yellow Van Zandt, again, um, that, you know, that's your affirmation, that, that she gives you an affirmation, something to think about. But this is great. And each of these cards, this is moderation. Rebirth. And I guess these colors are associated with chakra also. Individuality. That had come out earlier and I had picked it up, but then I put it back in when I was shuffling. Individuality. And that's an 11. 11. 11 is you say 11 and 11 and 22. 11 and 22 is, is a number that you really don't have to reduce to a single digit. They're kind of standalone. And that's individuality too, right? This card, this card indicates a need to enhance your individuality and be your true authentic self. Rather than follow the crowd, you're being guided to break away from the pack and take the road less traveled. Instead of feeling like you're a square peg in a round hole, you're being encouraged to build your own square hole. <laughs> By drawing this card hmm, and being, wait a minute, I skipped a page to know. By drawing this card, you are called upon to step up to the plate and celebrate your uniqueness. At this time, you must have the courage to speak your truth and march to the beat of your own drum despite the opinions of those around you. What others think of you isn't your business anyway and it's impossible to please everybody, so you must focus on pleasing yourself. As you honor your individuality and feelings and enhance your connection you enhance, I'm sorry. As you honor your individuality and feelings, you will reclaim your personal power and enhance your connection to source. When you do so, you can make your dreams come true. In order to improve your current situation, you are being asked to adjust to and harmonize with the natural rhythm and cycles of your life. Cycles that are encouraging you to embrace your individuality. As you step into your power, as your true authentic self, you will improve your relationships with others and your overall quality of life. Affirmation. I embrace my, indiv my individuality and become my true authentic self. I say, very good. I like that. Patience, number nine. Nope. Up oh, lies. Two. 
Patience is two. Patience is balance. Balance is Libra. Okay? Again, patience. I might have got a Libra reference twice since I've been doing this. Okay, they're having a personal uh, conversation here. Hey, Raymond. Okay. Spiritual career. Leadership. Very nice. Very okay. Follow your dreams. Pretty. And these are a little matte. A little matte, a little glossy. More. More. It's a good mix. It's, it's nice. Synchronicity. That's the name of what I'm talking about. When things start to like, you see a pattern and you can kind of point to it. And you don't have to point it out to nobody else but yourself. You don't have to tell the whole world if you don't want to, but it's good. Because you don't know that might be someone else's synchronicity. Abundance. 88. 88. That's, a, that's infinite abundance. That's good money. <laughs> that's Oprah money. <laughs> oh, man. Y'all heard that there was a joke somebody, oh, Chris Rock, I said he said that. Hey, I'm rich, but I'm not wealthy. He says Oprah's rich. Bill Gates is wealthy. If Bill, Gates, if Bill Gates woke up and found Oprah's money in his, that he had just Oprah's money in his account, he'd kill himself. I correct. <laughs> but that's about the disparaging disparity in, in income between men and women and the opportunity to, to, to create generational wealth. Oprah's been doing what she's been doing a long time. I think she's been out there and doing it a little longer than Bill Gates. Oprah has an empire. No, 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 no doubt about that. Pretty. Health. This is nice. This is going to be good. This is positive. I like this. All right. So we'll use that. Hey, Sharon. Yeah, we'll, 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 yeah, I look forward to that. Okay. That's cool. So, okay. The car ran. So those of you who were here for that, people at the car dealership were giving me Ajita all day. Is a um, I made a video about it. I was just pissed when I came home and I rented on Facebook, <laughs> and I posted it on YouTube if you want to see it. But my friends heard me anyway. The next morning which would have been Friday morning. Let me see. I don't know. I remember. But next morning, it could have been Friday morning. It could have been a Saturday morning, but it was morning. It was 9.01. You know, they tell you, like, when you're a bill collector, you can't call people's houses before 9 o'clock. So it's, it was like the, the manager of the dealership must have been sitting on the phone and pressed set you know press talk exactly at 901 because the phone woke me up like what is and he's ask he's telling me he I, I didn't meet him the day before he wasn't there or I didn't run into him or I didn't know who he was and he didn't know what was going on whatever and he's basically telling me that he understood exactly where I was coming from and he doesn't know what's wrong with these guys and you know please come back in and I'm going to, whatever car you pick out, I'm going to make sure that you get a remote start, da da da, da right off the bat. All right. Um, who is this? <laughs> it's like nine o'clock. Come on, y'all. Don't call me before 10. Anyway, um, 
I told him I would come. My son was off that day, so it had to be Saturday. Okay. My son was coming with me. And uh, I didn't want to go there. Like, he calls and I just show up like I'm excited or, you know, eager. So I came there around 11 o'clock. I told him 11 o'clock. I got there like 11, 20, whatever. Anyway, shenanigans continued to abound with these guys, these clowns. But he did explain... This is what they didn't explain to me. This is this is this part two of the act. <laughs> that every time I told them that this was the price and they kept telling me that's the internet price. What they didn't say to me is that in the, the disclaimer at the bottom of the internet price is, is that in order to get this price, you have to bring this ad, print it out and bring it with you from home and present it to the salesperson when they're taking you on your journey through their parking lots or whatever the fuck. So they never said that that was, like when they said it, I guess whatever they trained them in that that was some kind of a, uh, that meant something to them, that meant nothing to me. I'm like, what are you talking about? And if it wasn't for the internet, I wouldn't be standing, you know, how many customers would you have? What do you mean that's the internet price? I'm showing you the internet price. Why are you trying to charge me this? So that's the coupon that you have to bring with you. And if you don't, they don't have to honor the price on the internet. What bullshit is that? Anyway. That's the policy. All right, so like when you go to the grocery store and they're having a, a special, if you don't have the coupon, you don't get the special. Didn't the stores uh, stop that a while ago and say that we're going to honor whether you have the coupon or not just because you're a member, you join our store. They'll take care of that for you. Car dealerships are still back in 1960. Apparently. So he said, because of what they had done, try to sell me a two, two wheel drive. When I asked for a four wheel drive or an all wheel drive, they tried to sell me a two wheel drive. And I caught it before I ended up getting scammed. And I still went and looked on their lot for a second car. I gave them the benefit of the doubt that maybe they didn't realize that that car had that. But I know that they did. But I was trying to be nice. And I know I wanted to get a car. And they're very local. So... I went back in their lot and I found a car. And then that's when we're getting into this internet price shit. So the man was like, she didn't even, she, and he said this in front of them. Now maybe they had rehearsed that before I got there. <laughs> but he said to them, he called them, and he was like, she came in off the street and the car that she was going to buy that you all tried to sell her was no good. And instead of her going and leaving and going to the next dealership down the road, she stayed. So how was she supposed to print out the internet price? Don't you all think that maybe she has, you know, she, she has a point. Had she gone home and come back? All right. But she was here the whole time. And I know she, and he knew I was there because he saw me in there the whole time. I told you I was there for their Christmas bonuses. They had a Christmas party, the whole nine yards. Nobody offered me a check and nobody offered me Nothing. I just get some chocolate candy that was sitting out. And they had bagels in the back. But they have bagels in the back every day. And even if you get there early, the bagels are not there. <laughs> anyway, we ended up going through. They tried to still play a couple of little games. But the car that I had looked at, that he had already told me, oh, whatever car you want, I'll make sure that you get the um, remote start. The car that I wanted, the car that I had been interested in, already had a remote start. So now that we solved that problem, 
since you woke me up at nine o'clock. I don't need that. What else you got? So he was like, uh, I said, all right, those are all weather mats, is the all, all the rage that everybody wants. Yeah, give me those. Okay. I'm sure that's not as much as the Rose Star, but then again, I don't know. But so I got the all weather mats. And so I still am not thrilled, but I got a new car. It's certified pre owned. And it's beautiful. And it has enough leg space for my babies because they're tall twins. <laughs> and my son and my daughter. And uh, we might even get able to get my mother in there to say scoot up because they're skinny and tall. <laughs> but hi, Diane. But um, it was, it, it, you know. I, I drove it from the dealership to my house, which is not even put a mile on it. That's how close I am to this place. Um, but it's nice. My son drove it the other day for a moment because I had to go get some black cake at, at uh, the Jamaican bakery here. Nobody makes it like he does. And I usually try to get one around Christmas time and I hadn't gotten it. So my son was going that way and I told him to drive and get it and bring it back so he could get a chance to drive the car because he didn't have, you know, he didn't have a chance to drive it yet. But it's nice. It's a, um, Equinox. Equinox. Very nice. So, he asked my son to give him a good review on Yelp or whatever they do. So, okay, I hope he does. I, he didn't, they didn't know about my rant video when they called me to come in, I'm sure, because how why would they know that? And he doesn't know that I have a YouTube channel. So I'm not trying, but I'm not going to be evil and, you know, expose them. But anyway, we'll go, it's, it's good. But it just means I got to make sure I get some work done and I got to cut back on my bingo bash, maybe in bingo blitz and, you know, my spending, but my spending is not crazy like that, but I do, you know, if I'm playing the games and I'm spending because I'm buying, you know, tokens and whatever. You know how old ladies do? We play bingo. So, but I was already, you know, that was good to do because it was something to keep me busy. So I have to decide that I'm going to replace that activity as much as I will miss bingo blitz and bingo bash. I might have to withdraw from that like slow. I might have to just like maybe right before I go to bed at night, but not during the day in the morning when I wake up, maybe we'll adjust it because it's, it's going to be weaning. I've been doing that since I got off, of, since I retired and that's been like four or five years now, but I got something else to do and I love what I do and I want to make more time for it and, uh, and my life. I also have a life and I like to make more time for that too. And things are going really, 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 really well. And I am so happy. I'm blessed. And I thank you guys for hanging in there with me. Hey, Godfrey, for hanging in with, there with me over these past months when I've been uh, doing this evolution in front of your eyes. I hope it's a good thing. Um, and uh, I'm so happy to be able to include you all in my journey. And I hope that you're enjoying watching watching me grow. Like my friend Kevin has known me since I was a little girl. He and I were we grew up together. And I'm I'm gonna say this. Kevin and his mother took me to church, uh Pentecostal church, the first time I'd ever been in one, because I was raised in Episcopal church. And I was like maybe eleven, you know, nine, ten, eleven, eleven ish, twelve ish maybe. And Kevin and his mother Ms. Madeline, that's what I used to call her. They took me to church. Church of God in Christ. Mount Sinai number two, Church of God in Christ in Brooklyn. Elder, Will Elder William Conley was our pastor. And Kevin, my friend, he's a pastor himself today. That's beautiful. We grew up as kids, teenagers, right? He was a Marine. He went to the Marines. He was a hero. And he's a pastor. 
And here he is. And I know he don't believe in none of this, and this is all that, but he's my friend. He's my son, my daughter's godfather. And so I have to recognize and appreciate that, that connection. He was the first boy I ever kissed. Yeah, I told it. And that's okay. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. He caught me good. And I ran all the way home. Like like something. My mother's looking out the window. This is how convinced my, this is how scared of her I was. We had two friends, Ricky and Gwen, and we were all playing Chinese handball in their building. And they lived around the corner, right? In the same building that Jackie Gleason's address is on Chauncey Street, that's the building Kevin lived in. And we playing this Chinese handball. The ball gets off, the, the walls are like nice, right? Mm -hmm. Inside of their building. So there's neighbors and stuff, and we're playing handball in the building. We're kids, we don't care. Everybody's at work anyway. So the ball falls, Spalding pink ball, right? So it goes running out, goes down the steps, and uh, Ricky goes, Ricky and Gwen go running down to get the ball. I must have been like 13, maybe I was at this point. We had already been to church and all of that other stuff. But this is my buddy. We, we're friends and we're playing. So Gwen and, and Ricky ran down the steps to uh, chase the ball. They were taking forever. I'm sitting on the steps, sitting on the steps in the building. And I look and say, what's taking up so long? What are they doing? <laughs> So you want me to tell you what they're doing? And he kissed me. What? I ran out of there like a jackrabbit. Running home, running home, running home. Now, now Kevin and Gwen and Ricky, they running behind me like, what happened? Where are you going? And Kevin doesn't know what he did, you know. And I'm running, running, running around. My mother's in the window, as she always was, looking out, seeing what's going on. And she sees me, you know, and she looks, she said, what happened to Patty? And he says, I don't know. She said, what are you doing? He said, oh, I kissed her. Then she ran. And my mother started laughing. And she said, okay, don't worry. I got it. Okay, I know what happened. All right. Because she had me convinced, even though I knew better. I knew better because I knew better because she's a nurse. And my father's a nurse. So I knew better. But she had convinced me somehow that kissing causes friction and friction causes babies. So I knew I was pregnant because he kissed me. She thought that was the funniest shit. She laughed, she laughed, she laughed. But I I knew better, but because my mother was like that, because she was like a drill sergeant, you know, I was scared to death. I found out, of course, that that was not true. But she got a good laugh out of it. And I guess I'm glad that it happened that way so that I didn't get a beating. <laughs> Because it was either a laugh or beaten, one of the two. Anyway, thank you guys. I think that I have uh, exhausted your time and mine. I think that I'm, I'm good and I can do this uh, person's reading because I was trying to center myself. And I think that you all have helped me do that today. So thank you for watching. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Um, it's amazing. I'm, like I said, Thank, thank God, thank you guys, thank everybody for sharing and liking and subscribing to the channel. It's amazing. Every time I go back, like in the morning when I open up, there's all of these subscriptions and people with these beautiful, beautiful comments. It's amazing and it's great and it's wonderful and I'm very grateful. So, next New Year's Day, don't forget, I didn't forget. Right, we're gonna write two things that we learned this year, two things that we are grateful for, and two things that we like about ourselves. We'll put it in your status in the morning on New Year's Day. And you're gonna make a like the little post like everybody's been doing. With that nice colorful background. Pick uh whatever you want. And uh share it. Post it. So your other so your friends and family, whoever goes home there, will see it. You can tell them to do it too. Who knows? Maybe that's what we need to do. If we all start acting grateful, 
Maybe God will heal our land. So I will talk to you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, happy Kwanzaa. And uh, I'll see you either New Year's Day or before that to get those other two decks. Because I told you I was real good. I got a lot of decks this year. I'll see you guys later. Bye.